I I still remember what Mike the late Mike Enriquez uh, told mm-hmm. in in one of his interview. Mm-hmm. He said uh, awards will just come as long as you work hard. Do not expect for the awards or monetary uh, return. It will just come if you do your job. If you're good at it, uh, if you excellent or you give your hundred percent on it, it will come. You know, uh, because when you expect gratification uh, immediately, immediately, uh, it will it will really affect your performance. You know? mm-hmm. Compared to just work hard, mm-hmm. do the right thing, mm-hmm. and just you know, uh, the the higher ups will notice it. Mm-hmm. Will will they're the one that will uh, give you the gratification. Okay, good day everybody and welcome to the Leader's Edge. This is the season 14, episode 9 of this podcast. And hey, we have a new guest here. It was definitely a man of a man of energy, of dynamism. Hey, Arnold, please introduce yourself. Good day everyone. My name is Arnold Cap A. Balais from Cebu City, a para-athlete a team captain of a dragon boat team here in Cebu and inspirational speaker. So yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you, Con, and uh, to share my story to our viewers. Okay. First of all, when I saw the your video profile and definitely I, I like that 3D if, if I'm going to have a mnemonic for it. So uh, determina- driven determination. What's the other D? Because because I remember it was uh, uh, three desire. Three, desire. Ayun, desire. De- there yeah. you go, desire. So this three D is definitely a, a good thing to for us to to think about. So Arnold, what was going on your mind when the first time that you that you realized that you had this disability then when you were younger and how did you kind of overcome and overturn the whole situation? Yeah, just to give you a little background, Con, mm-hmm. I was born and raised in a poor family in Roosevelt, mm-hmm. in Lupihan, Bataan. I'm the youngest in the family. Very athletic. Uh, uh, I had an accident, a bad fall while playing basketball in a local league in Olongapu City. And uh, I, was, I was living my life and I was on track for my dreams when an unfortunate event happened. No, I, mm-hmm. I had a bad that? ball. I had mm-hmm. a bad ball while playing basketball. And it changed my life forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, your question is, so uh, how did I deal with it? Mm-hmm. it it's so hard. Uh, mm-hmm. Remember, you're 14 years old. You're full of energy. Mm-hmm. You're... You have this idea of life. Yes. And then suddenly, you, you cannot move. You're mm-hmm. just stuck in the bed. Mm-hmm. It was so mm-hmm. hard for me physically and emotionally. Mm-hmm. And for my family, it was hard financially. Mm-hmm. And yes, I have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I was very discouraged and uh, uh, frustrated with my mm-hmm. situation back then. Mm-hmm. Is there like a something that like a catalyst or a personal experience during that time that somehow overturned this whole situation for you? I learned two things you know, when you are in your lowest or darkest point of your life. Number one, uh, you stay and stuck with the situation. Or number two, you crawl your way up, you pick up the pieces and start again. Uh, I choose number two. And it led me to, I believe in every, in every darkest point or lowest point of our life, there is, lives, there is a uh, turning point. And these three very important thing helped me to my turning point. Number one is um, acknowledgement. No, very important. You acknowledge your circumstances or your situation. Mm-hmm. And that will lead you to number two, which is mm-hmm. acceptance. Acceptance is a very easy word to say, but it is very hard to do. Uh, it's a process. And mm-hmm. when you are in your lowest point or darkest point of your life, time is your best friend. 
no? uh, time heals everything so it's a process you need time and it will lead you to number three which is action your respond to the situation or circumstances that will um, help you uh, start all over again and do your thing uh, for as for me I I lost my right leg but Yes, it's so hard, no, thinking that you only have only one leg. But, uh, I, 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 what you call this? I, I pick up the pieces and learn to use whatever I, I still have. <laughs> I still have two hands. I still have one leg. <laughs> so I focus on my strength. No, I, I did not dwell on the negative, the the one that I lost. So, so physical and mental strength. What well, yes. was there? Was there a person, certain person or persons that somehow influenced you? Yes, uh, especially mm -hmm. my brother. Uh, okay. My my brother is a fitness instructor working in the ah, okay. And every time he sends me photos, I was really amazed by his body transformation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So secretly, I enrolled in a local gym in Sampaloc, Manila. Even and, though during during yes yes when I lost had... my leg already, ah, okay. wow. and I'm already okay. an amputee mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. Uh, an instructor, Coach Monte Mendigoria, uh, designed a program that mm -hmm. will suit my disability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Coach mm -hmm. Monte also invited me to try uh, bench press powerlifting, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that was the start of my para athlete career. Mm -hmm. I, I joined the local uh, bench press competition national, and in 1995, I represent our country in the international uh, bench press competition in Atlanta, Georgia. So those people, uh, my brother and Coach Monte Mendigoria, uh, helped me to where I am right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are my my inspiration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so good to hear, Arnold. I'm I'm just curious, and this is for the benefit of our viewers. So, what do you specifically call that particular prosthetic? Is is it still called prosthetic leg? Like, because I I've, I've been seeing that in in the some YouTube channels that. The, the most of the athletes use that even uh, retard special forces. Uh, the prosthetic leg is like a normal uh, prosthesis. Mm -hmm. uh, for the para athlete, they use this sports type prosthesis. Mm -hmm. no, what, what, it, what do you specifically call that? Uh, they call it um, plex uh, plex leg or mm -hmm. uh, C leg mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's curved. Yes, and this is only designed for a sport. After mm -hmm. you do your sport, you remove it, you replace it with a regular leg, mm -hmm. because otherwise you're you're bouncing when you walk with it. Uh, it's not designed for regular walking. It's okay. really designed for sports. For sports, I see. I see. Yes. I see. All right. Is that somehow available here, or you just happen to get it when during your stint abroad? Yes, it's available here, mm -hmm. uh, but. You know, it comes with a with a huge price because okay. it, it's uh, from Germany. Mm -hmm. The technology is from Germany and US, and it's very expensive. It's very expensive. Well, one of the things that I've been coming across, and may maybe somehow you 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 can you can share your inputs here, is that is there like a possibility that you happen to reach out to this? Students, particularly elementary to high school students, because I've kind of noticed that somehow PE, PE here in 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 Metro Manila, it's like marginalized. It's not really given importance, and yet in your story, sports build mm -hmm. your character. So, what do you think about the idea that somehow PE is being marginalized here in the school? It's, it's true, no, it's true, con. Uh. For me, sports really helped me mm -hmm. where I am right now. I think 90% mm -hmm. of my recovery is because of sports. Mm -hmm. uh, way back before I lost my leg, I'm into mm -hmm. sports already. So it mm -hmm. carried on when I lost my leg. I, you know, I already built something on me. I'm very athletic. So when I lost my leg and when I tried other sports, I still can do it because mm -hmm. I, I have a history of being a athletic. Uh, with regards to high school or elementary, I think it's better to really encourage them to engage into sports because it builds your character, the mm -hmm. discipline. Uh, definitely, that's, definitely. That's what sports will give the children mm -hmm. and the students. And that's my dream also, you know, to give uh, talks with different uh, uh, students because uh, as young as they are, they need to 
uh, realize the or you or value the importance of sports, and not only physical but mentally, and also when they grow up, uh, there will be discipline. Uh, when you are into sports, it's a win-win situation. Yes, yes. Even if you lose in a competition, you still win because you gain something. You learn something from mm -hmm. that loss. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's where your 3D the mm -hmm. driven determination desire comes in because it's really applicable to anyone regardless yes. of that, that is something that, that you can contribute well how, how about the idea of not just being able to to give talks uh, has the idea of being a um, teacher for the PE uh, came across your mind uh Actually, by accident, I I was I was assigned to teach uh, as a laboratory instructor because of my profession. I I am a prosthetic and orthotic technician. Mm -hmm. I, I make artificial leg and mm -hmm. I do counseling for patients who are mm -hmm. candidate for amputation or newly amputated patient. Mm -hmm. uh, with my experience, I was invited to be a laboratory instructor in one of university here in Cebu, mm -hmm. and that was the start of being me as a laboratory or as a teacher. Nice. Uh, I believe experience really will will taught you so much mm -hmm. and experience is very important to, to all of us. Unless you experience something, you cannot really teach it. Yes, uh, yes. That's why uh, I it, it's true that education is a continuous thing. Mm -hmm. It never stops and I am very excited to uh, to learn no? every mm -hmm. seminar so what, with regards to sports or with regards to speaking. I love to attend those uh, gatherings because I, I really want to learn. Uh, every day there's a new learning and uh, it, I believe also it's a blessing when you share it. That's why my passion is really to to reach uh, especially those students from the province mm -hmm. who don't have the capacity to attend different mm -hmm. seminars. Mm -hmm. I want it to, you know, I want to give Free talks to public students, public leaders, students, or yeah, students because they are the the you know uh, the future leaders, mm -hmm. and sometimes they need to hear true stories. Definitely, that it's will going to inspire them. them. Yes, yes. In your situation, somehow we could definitely tell that you made yourself a niche. And and with this niche of idea, the experience, the the being this expert in, in this in this experience based situation that you have, is that uh, how can you somehow relate it to the business side? Uh yes, um, you know when you are an athlete or para athlete, uh, you can always apply what you learn, uh, in 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 your sports. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the training is is very important. Mm -hmm. That the journey. It's not about the winning. It's how you, you know, the the everyday sacrifices. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the when I I can still remember when I was still in swimming, we woke up four thirty in the morning and we are in the pool by five a.m. Mm -hmm. and we train until seven, and then we we come back in the afternoon five to seven again. Mm -hmm. So the journey is very important because it teaches you a lot and you can apply that when especially the companies mm -hmm. uh you know the importance of time time management you know uh, you value the time of others you don't want to be late because you know time is very expensive and mm -hmm. for us Filipinos yan pa rin yung problema eh. that's the problem no the Filipino time uh, <laughs> yeah. as much as possible for me I want to be as early as one hour before the actual schedule so that uh, I can still prepare. I am relaxed when mm -hmm. I do my thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those those uh, lessons from being an athlete can be applied to business. I see, I see. De 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 definitely, I would agree. But one of the things that were the business side is it's really uh, experiencing is that the the newer workforce has this like in, instant gratification mentality mm -hmm. and okay this this is the situation right now Arnold you're an HHR head and you're doing a talk for, for the for the for the HR symposium what what are, what are the things that you would like 
to impart for, for this current generation who's into instant gratification, who's not into delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, no, it's very important. You value uh, the importance of hard work. Mm-hmm. Nice, uh, nice. Always, always remember uh, your present situation right now. You deserve it. You work hard for it. And uh, uh, you need to value that. Some some people, they just, especially generations right now, uh, <laughs> most of them, they want instant. No, they, they don't. Sadly. <laughs> they don't uh, practice the, you know. The late uh, gratification. Yes. Uh, I, I still remember what Mike, the late Mike Enriquez uh, told mm-hmm. in, in one of his interview. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, awards will just come as long as you work hard. Mm-hmm. Do not expect for the awards or monetary uh, return. Mm-hmm. It will just come. If you mm-hmm. do your job, if you're good at, at it, uh, if you excellent or you give your 100% on it, mm-hmm. it will come. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Because when you expect gratification uh, immediately, immediately uh it will it will really affect your performance mm-hmm. you know, compared to just work hard mm-hmm. do the right thing mm-hmm. and just you know uh the the higher ups will notice it mm-hmm. will will they're the one that will uh, give you the gratification just yeah. just do your thing just work hard and uh you know uh you call this follow the higher apps you know mm-hmm. follow the basic instruction and that's it what, what you said there definitely some common sense and yet somehow it's being sidelined correct because, because sometimes being like i i hate to say this but sometimes you know the the, the influence of social media has really dawned on them uh, my my follow-up question is that have you somehow experienced talking to the to the younger generations about this idea of telling them that hey uh instant gratification will not really help you and somehow they still uh hold on to this idea that hey anything can be hacked you know? <laughs> <laughs> have you had any situation like that even in in sports or even during your training the, the younger ones who's, who's uh, interacting with you well in sports uh everything now is scientific Mm-hmm. But you cannot, you cannot, you cannot lie about the result. So you cannot get it instant. Mm-hmm. I can, mm-hmm. I can share that. Uh, for me, when I first okay. uh, had my gold medal, it took me three years. Mm-hmm. Three I years. Almost, I almost quit. Three years. That yes. that's almost a lifetime to the younger correct. ones. Correct. <laughs> correct. So there's no shortcut. There's no shortcut. Mm-hmm. You have to go through the the what you call this. The process. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Walang shortcut. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, uh, eventually the the medals, the accolades will come as long mm-hmm. as you you work hard and you train hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a para athlete or if you're an athlete, there's no other way. Training is the key. Mm-hmm. Even in the business world mm-hmm. or, or in student, you study hard, then you you'll pass all the exams. If you're a businessman, you you know you motivate your your employees. You do the right, you do the right thing, and yeah, somehow all of this is just uh, will be reciprocated by by different result. Mm-hmm. Imagine it took me three years to get my gold medal, and <laughs> along those three years, I wanted to quit already because mm-hmm. when will I get this medal? Mm-hmm. But you know. Uh, from the challenges, from the losses, from failures, that's where the learning is. That's yeah. where the lesson is. So yeah. do not be afraid to fail yeah. because it's not the end of the world. You know, I remember what other what my friend told me. Yes, you lost your right leg, but it's not the end of the world. You're still breathing and you can mm-hmm. still do a lot of things, mm-hmm. which inspires me. It's true. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Though I lost my right leg, but yeah, mm-hmm. I have to continue my life. Definitely. definitely. So, so with that idea... What, what 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 can you say about the 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 other situation? Uh, for myself because I'm also a personal trainer, I also hustle up on this. Is that uh, how would you like to would you like to say something about this this current situation? That's um 
permitting within our gener- the younger generations of this body dysmorphia. It's like they do, they are well able, and yet somehow they they think of, they think themselves of less, and they want to be like like um, beyond themselves or or greater, and yet they're not appreciating this the the the, the blessings or the the situation that they have and they have, they have this you know sometimes body dysmorphia whole thing. correct uh i think uh you can apply the you should practice the attitude of gratitude nice yeah. Atti- uh, attitude okay attitude of gratitude mm-hmm. nice word okay look back no mm-hmm. I, uh you cannot do it alone mm-hmm. so, uh i i mentioned my coaches my mentors uh, along the way they've been there for me and i owe it to them you know even my my mm-hmm. my parents because uh no one no one's an island uh, mm-hmm. you you cannot do it alone you need help from somehow uh somewhere somehow you need, you will need somebody to help you <laughs> and our role is to always remind them na uh, uh be thankful no, for for what you have right now, it's it's a blessing. Sometimes we tend to forget to thank those people who help us along the way. And when you are grateful, the more you you'll have blessings, you know, mm-hmm. because you're you're still remembering those people who help you along the way. Otherwise, if you're ungrateful, <laughs> uh, it. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. You, you'll never get uh, promoted, or you'll never get the good result because it's a uh, no. It's um again a very basic law. Na, uh, you have to look back mm-hmm. and always be thankful to mm-hmm. what you have mm-hmm. and the opportunities that comes your way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not an accident, but. Mm-hmm. Opportun- uh, sometimes uh, difficult circumstances will open opportunities for us. Okay, nice, nice. So, so the other question that is like, what, what is it? What's your mindset? What are your different mindsets as you went to the whole process of being who you are now? When I lost my leg, mm-hmm. uh, again, no, it's a process. When mm-hmm. I, I uh, slowly accepting what happened to me. Mm-hmm. My mindset was, I will be the best amputee in Cebu. Nice. I will it's be a, the best amputee in. Uh, it's like a vision. Adila. Vision. Yes. Nice, I, nice. I I I saw uh, Miss Diana's uh, episode, and she said, "Write it down. Write in the paper." And you read it every day, like twenty-one days. I think it's true. No, when, when you when you believe in what you you you're writing and you say it will come through mm-hmm. you know slowly i saw it that oh I, i'm i'm getting you know though i i i lost my right leg but i i consider myself as the best amputee i'm a gold nice. medalist i'm a champion uh, paddler nice. i'm a i am a inspirational speaker because not everyone is given a opportunity to do those those things Definitely, I and agree. I agree. I am blessed to have the the talent to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, so what I want is I want to share it also because I want to share the blessing. Mm-hmm. You'll never know. Uh, even if you just inspire one people, it will reflect. It will have a chain reaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can still remember one of my students in one of the colleges here in Cebu. Uh, he thanked me after how many years when we saw again. He said, thank you, Sir A, for, for your encouragement. Uh, during that time, I was in my lowest point. But when you share your story, I remember how important it is, how mm-hmm. you know, I'm just wasting my time mm-hmm. and the effort of my, my parents. But mm-hmm. hearing your story, mm-hmm. I should have valued the things mm-hmm. that I have. Mm-hmm. And now he's a doctor. Nice. And, you know those those uh, stories will also boost my uh, confidence, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a manifestation of you're you're doing good because you're telling your story, you're sharing your story. You'll never know who'll be blessed by your story. 
yes but by definitely helping others yes it is it, one of it's one of the tenets of you know of living yourself well okay so how did the my, my, how did the 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 products the 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 ones that you are sponsoring approach you were you selected amongst the roster of like hey this guy is possible we, we can use for endorsing our products and this guy uh who are are you uh, a set of a panel being being chosen or set pre-selected to endorse their their brands so how, how was it how was the process uh I was in I was in Cebu when mm-hmm. somebody texted me and said, "Sir, Sir Arnold, are you interested to be a brand ambassador?" Nice. <laughs> uh, during that time, uh, text hooks are rampant, so mm-hmm. I did not I did not you know pay attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> but then she she called up and said, uh, "Sir, I am the manager. I am a manager, a talent manager, and." We want to get you as a brand ambassador of a big pharmaceutical company. <laughs> so when she called, I said, "Oh, maybe this is true." And then she <laughs> she called again and said, "If somebody called you, sir, please don't entertain them because I am the one. Uh, I am the first one who, who relate you to the relay you this news." Mm-hmm. So I I told her that I'll be in Boracay for a dragon boat uh, competition. Yes. And then after that, I'm free to you know to, to discuss. Yes, to discuss. But she said. Sir, after your your competition, can you go straight to Manila? We will arrange your ticket. Don't go back to Cebu. <laughs> wow. And I think it's true already. Then I met the director, and later on, I found out. I asked um, uh, one staff of this big pharmaceutical company. I asked her, Sir, uh, ma'am, uh, how? Why did you choose me, or where did you learn from me? Yeah. They said they've been looking for a a resilient Filipino character, and we are four actually. Uh, I am the only disabled or differently abled in that uh, uh, number, mm-hmm. and the three are athletes also. Mm-hmm. And then they research about my stories. They they ask me if I have a certificate of uh, climbing Mount Apo as the first amputee to climb Mount Apo. I I comply with what they ask. And they asked also for certification from Philippine Sports Commission if I really won gold medal in first nice. ASEAN Para Games in Malaysia. I provided all the, the things that they needed. And yes, they said, you're the one. You're the one that we want to, to be the face of this product. Mm-hmm. And that was a big break for me because out of nowhere, um, of doing things without expecting something suddenly this big break came blessings and it helped me it propelled my career as a speaker because it add weight it adds weight to my name <laughs> so every time they invite me oh arnold is a a, a ambas- brand ambassador of this uh, of this medicine so uh, it opens a lot of opportunities for mm-hmm. me so that's why i'm very i i i very thankful with the, with this uh, pharmaceutical company for giving me the opportunity to represent their company and you know what uh most of the parents uh persons with disability they was they were really inspired by that tv commercial because when they saw it they said oh there's still hope for my children or my son or my daughter who has disability mm-hmm. because if arnold can do it mm-hmm. uh, my children can also do it mm-hmm. it just shows that uh Disability will not hinder us from achieving our goals or our dreams as long as we work hard and we believe on our ourselves. De- definitely, th- th- those are uh, good points and must must be heard by from from students to to the to the enterprising people and at the same time even to the younger workforce because th- this emotional. Um, emotional hindrance from them will definitely cascade towards towards uh, expanding themselves you know making better of themselves okay. so w- w- when when you got that uh, sponsorship so how how did you feel like ecstatic like hey I, I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting this because you know what was going on to your mind like uh, how did you felt like you know are you thrilled back then because definitely 
it's a big thing to get sponsored. <laughs> yes, uh, it's true, Con. No? I, I'm so excited and happy about it. And then, you know, experiencing the the celebrity status, especially <laughs> during the 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 shooting of that ad. Mm-hmm. And seeing it in television, it's mm-hmm. another thing. You know, personally, when, when they when they told me that, oh, this next week, it will be the launching of your TV commercial. So mm-hmm. watch for it. We'll give you the link. Mm-hmm. And seeing it first time in television, it's another uh, milestone for you. Milestone for me and joy. And I, I cried when, because that's me already on television. <laughs> and I can still remember no, from a 15-year-old boy who lost his right leg, who lost his dreams, who lost his joy of living, to this man. Who, who we seeing in this television? So, uh, I can, I cannot believe that, you know, uh, who would have thought? You're an, you're an amputee, and yet, yet here I, you are, yes. full blown. Correct. That's why uh, never say die attitude is very <laughs> important. Mindset uh, and the three Ds that you have. Wow, nice. <laughs> but actually, as, I will say, go ahead. As long as you're breathing. There's still hope. There's still nah, hope. Nice. nice. Uh, actually, w- without sound, sounding pandering to you, b- because I've been observing the the this certain certain brand for this um for this uh avoiding the the muscle aches because it's being endorsed by you know my by by a boxer by a by a known mm-hmm. boxer and actress and actors mm-hmm. and sometimes you know the the nameless like the the what we're going to show in the advertisement like firefighters like mm-hmm. uh, persons of and yet w- w- when i saw this hey it's a good thing that they finally use an actual unknown person because th- there's much more of uh, you can relate to instead mm-hmm. of you know like showing someone like the firefighter then after they're taking these mm-hmm. medicines like definitely it's a good thing it, it's a it's a win win situation for you and also it's a win win situation for for the uh pharma company because the there the idea that you you're being the ambassador is that normal people can really relate to you you're not just someone who's pretending mm-hmm. and who's acting and, and definitely with, with this idea the other the other brands the the in, in your in intro ads that that I saw how how did they approach you in, in that situation I think if you're a company uh Always you, always, you always choose the the winner. <laughs> they don't. They <laughs> they like the winner because nice. you you bring in winning attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I I I came from 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 scratch to this today. Mm-hmm. But what they are really looking for is how you your your journey, and uh, what can you bring to this uh to this uh product that mm-hmm. that people will you know. Will we will will buy this product when you endorse it? Mm-hmm. And for me, I I think uh, that pharmaceutical company, uh, they practice diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion. And I believe also it's first time that they use a person with disability An to do person to do this uh, TV ad. That, uh, yung bida, no. Uh, First time in Philippine history, I think that they they use a persons with disability to do the whole commercial, and not only one but twice. So that's why um, every time I I I feel uh, discouraged or down, I just look at the YouTube and see the commercial, and you know it will bring me to uh, oh this how far I've gone. So I don't wanna. Uh, waste my my day just uh because they op- they given me an opportunity I, I don't want to waste this opportunity and i want to share it uh, because uh when you look around there's still a lot of people who are especially mentally when, when mm-hmm. pandemic mm-hmm. came all of us were was hit by pandemic and most of the people uh they were hit mentally. That's why mental health is really important. No, physically you're strong, but how about your mental state? Mm-hmm. How will you accept or how will you deal with different situations? I'm very thankful that 
uh, I am a athlete or para athlete because it helps. It really, um, uh, it's a big help if you are into sports because you you can deal with difficult circumstances or situation because your mind is trained to be tough. You know, in accepting defeat in competition, those will help you when it comes to the real world you know, outside of sports. So I'm very thankful that that I engaged into sports. I became a para athlete. Um, it helps me a lot in my in my life, actually, even in my family. Looking back, like for example, let's say that the accident didn't happen. We we're like. Able bodies, for example. How how do you visualize yourself then? And I think it's really three hundred sixty. I don't then, know where, where I am because I I was living then, in the province. We are, you know, uh, life in Bataan is very difficult, very hard, yeah. and I can say that is blessing in disguise that <laughs> I lost my right leg because. My contemporaries, my classmates, my batchmates, mm-hmm. some are drug addicts, some are... Ah, that, that's sad. You know, so you'll never know. If I did not lose my leg, maybe I'm, I'll be one of them also with no bright future. Mm-hmm. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a I reason. I agree, I agree, I agree. Uh, it's just that we have to to find the our purpose You know, now that I understand, I think my purpose is to really share what uh, what happened to me because it can be a a a medicine to others or it can be a help to others that experiencing the same situation. Maybe they are discouraged or upset, but hearing stories, hearing true stories, will uplift the spirit. Oh. Uh, this is a an inspirational story. So I, I, it inspires me, and I will, you know, turn around and pick up the pieces and start again. It's not the end of the world. Uh, most of the time, I also watch different uh, uh, shows in YouTube, mm-hmm. true stories or mm-hmm. you know, inspirational stories. So continue, continuously yes, yourself. It. it It really helps us. It really help you to uh, reinvent yourself also, because uh, nice. reinvent. you will you will encourage different audiences eh, from mm. different talks. That's why mm. you have to apply mm. uh, what you saw, what you learned from others. It's not copying. It's just that you have to deliver it in a manner that suits your style. So, so currently, so. What what is the the thing that you're somehow studying or thinking that hey I'm going to use this as a continuous self development uh, mm-hmm. uh, evaluation for me? So what are you like currently studying or into or like taking interest in as part of your continuous improvement? Before the pandemic, I've been doing I've been giving inspirational talk in in Manila. Since I'm based in Cebu, that's been that's been the problem. Sometimes they invited me, they're inviting me, but if they heard that oh he's from Cebu, so and you know, uh, some of the uh, companies will hesitate to invite you because of the distance. But uh, because opportunities, you know, mas mas marami sa Manila na mm-hmm. opportunities. So now that pandemic is over, I I really want to. Uh, give talks again, especially in Manila. Uh, here in Cebu or in Mindanao, from time to time, I I, I receive invitation. <laughs> But of course, um, maybe next year, I start of the year, I want to do it more in Manila. And, you know, my, my ultimate dream is go international also. Nice. Uh, That's possible in your situation. Correct. I... I I I'm really inspired with no arms no legs. Uh Buyashik, you know, even though he has no arms no legs but he's touring around the world giving inspirational messages and touching people's lives. Mm-hmm. That's my ultimate dream also. I want to do that also here in the Philippines and mm-hmm. you know, Asia. I want to inspire our OFWs uh 
by sharing the stories. Because from from my stories, you can relate to you know, whatever they are facing right now with the lessons and learnings that I can share to them. Mm-hmm. Somehow, we help them cope up with their present situation also. Nice, nice, nice. If if I'm going to to in, impart something, it's like your situation is definitely commendable. And sadly, uh, are you familiar with Rodolfo Fernandez or sometimes he's called as Rudy Fernandez? Uh, nice. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and sadly, his situation was like marginalized as compared to him. And for me, we we shouldn't look be looking at them as like a hindrance, but more of like they're you and Rudy Fernandez back then wasn't looking at their at their disability, but they're looking at it as part of you know continuous process. And mm-hmm. and sad and sadly he was, it, 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 correct correct me if I'm wrong, Arnold. I, I think he just uh accidentally and sadly. When he died, he was like hit and run again. Huh? Yes, sadly. Uh, sadly. he was uh, doing his training by biking. I think mm-hmm. I was able to to meet him in Iloilo since I'm nice. my, my parents is from Iloilo. I had a chance to meet uh, Sir Rudy, the late Sir Rudy Fernandez, <laughs> and uh, uh, I asked him for some tips because mm-hmm. he he does triathlon. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I'm I want to go to Triton also. So he he gave me some pointers about nice. swimming and uh, biking and running. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was really encouraged by his courage because he's using a ordinary artificial leg and it's so mm-hmm. hard, so heavy. And when I saw his stump, he has uh, luxury. Uh, what you call this? Uh, chaffing or chaffing on the skin because yes. Of the- because of the the prosthesis but uh, because it's not meant for sports it's like it, it's yes. like w- w- what we usually see like the the, the rigid thing mm-hmm. so I he's see. using the old school type of prosthesis mm-hmm. and but you know he 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 was able to manage to to finish triathlon and triathlon is not easy it's definitely, three discipline definitely. and definitely, uh, definitely. finishing it with one leg it's you know something to to be inspired of and yeah uh that's why those who came before us especially those persons with disability who came before us who paved the way for us i i, I want to thank them because they opened a lot of doors for us uh mm-hmm. by doing those things and i think now that i am capable of uh doing also this thing i want to encourage also up and coming persons with disability because it never stops uh the children with disability as young as they are we should start educating their parents that you know disability is not the end of the world nice. it can open a lot of opportunities for them as long as you expose them to different uh, uh activities sports is one you know maybe music or arts for me sports work work out for me and uh Maybe to some arts or or music, uh, I I believe we are all given talent. It's just uh, we have to find uh, what we have to to discover what's our talent and use our talent. That's why uh, uh, being an ambassador for persons with disability, I I love to be to to give talks, no for. Not only for the the able body, but also for persons with disability, mm-hmm. because uh, if you goes around Manila, you will see them begging. And yes, it's uh, sadly. Yes, yeah, sadly, it, it's it's that their the, uh, I, I is that. Uh, parang yun na lang yung magagawa nila. Mm-hmm. We just know. We just you know, just just go to proper uh, institution. Mm-hmm. They can help. They can help, and mm-hmm. me, I'm I'm giving free swimming lesson for disabled children, and you can see the the development. No, not only physical, but mentally, they they develop that mental strength, mental toughness when they are into sports, and it will carry on in their uh, daily living or in their lives because you instill to them the value of sports. And definitely, I had to take note, everyone. This is coming from a guy who's in the vernacular, mahirap, galing sa wala, and marginalized. 
he rose from, from his situation. So there's no excuse like, hey, I, I don't have money. Hey, I have this money, but yet I am poor in my mental fortitude. And with that idea of all this, you know, we're going now to the financial aspect. So how do you manage your finances with, with all these blessings that, that came about? Because I I, I work in, in the in the in the entertainment industry back then. And one of the things that I've noticed during the the upcoming budding actors, actress, even the stuntman is like once the money came in, poof. Once mm-hmm. the money came in, poof. So yeah. how do you manage your finances? With all the blessings uh, that you have. Correct. Uh, of course, uh, uh, for me as a family man already, uh, my my priority, your priorities is very important. Uh, if you're a family man, my priority is my 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 children. You know, uh, I have to save for them, and with the financial uh, with the financial uh, status that I had when I I became an ambassador goes to uh, my children, my parents also. I mm-hmm. I was able Giving to help back to them. Yes, I was able to help them. Um, I think not only uh, you have to be wise physically or mentally, but you have to be wise also financially. Uh, saving for the rainy days is wise financially very nice. important. I've learned also that you know, just live on your means. Uh, nowadays, nice. must, uh, uh, you know, generations nowadays are more on more on material things. Consumerism. And it will all pass away. <laughs> but what's important, we have to save, yeah. save for education, the basic, you know, uh, shelter, food, and clothing. <laughs> Those are very basic. But uh, yeah, maybe... Once a month or twice, once a week, you can go out with your family to have a dinner. That's yeah. it. Those are most important uh, yeah. time that you will spend for them. And yes. uh, quality, quality yes. time to spend with them. Yeah. It, comes, it boils down to priorities. Nice. And when, uh, when, you know, financially speaking, <laughs> you have to be, you have, you have to prioritize. All right. So definitely you're, you're a busy man, if, if, if I'm going to say so myself, right? you know when you're busy it's a blessing because <laughs> you're doing things you're doing yes, you uh, have work something yeah, you have uh, work and nice. uh, you have to be thankful if you're busy <laughs> because otherwise if you're not busy you're not <laughs> earning and you're you're, you're you're yeah you're you're stagnant <laughs> so i want to be busy rather than not busy at all so continuous improvement you know just like in sports you don't stop training because Correct. once that once you stop training your enemies will, will, will use that against you. Correct. So well, how, how can people reach out to you? What, what are your, your social media accounts? Uh, Arnold Bala is in Facebook, mm-hmm. in Instagram, and in TikTok, mm-hmm. and in Link also. Mm-hmm. I was in Link also. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you can invite Captain A to... Whenever you need an inspirational speaker, I'm, I'm available and also soon uh we will be launching my youtube channel nice wherein uh, we will feature stories different stories different inspirational stories that will you know inspire our kababayans right so we encourage everyone for those who are watching this you may post your comments and reactions and even questions to captain a so with that said arnold what what are the things that we would like to say to our audience and for, for those watching this, regardless of, of their situation? Yes, uh, Con, I'd like to leave you with these uh, three important life lessons from my journey. I acronym I acronym it into CAP. No? CAP, C A P. No, uh, K K A P. Ah, K A P. Okay. So, so for K-A-P. letter K, mm-hmm. keep okay. and value what you have. Uh, your family, your health, and your talent. Your family, because uh, worse comes to worse, your family will be there for you. No matter what happens, uh, there will be the one to to help you, to encourage you. Your health is very important also because, you know, the saying health is wealth. 
You can do more if you're healthy. So please invest in your health. Number three, your talent. Uh, do not waste your talent. Uh, use your talent. Discover your talent. You'll never know what it will give to you. And letter A, address and rise from challenges. Mm -hmm. Never never run away from challenges. You have to address it, address it head on and you have to rise from different challenges. Because again, uh, lessons are learning comes from different challenges, different adversities, obstacles. Mm -hmm. So do not run away from it. And last but not the least, letter P, practice the attitude of gratitude. Always look attitude. back. Always look back and thank all those people who help you along the way. So that's it. Cap, uh, keep nice. and value what you have. Address and rise from different challenges and practice the attitude of gratitude. Nice. Thank you very much. So for, for, the, for those of you watching this, go ahead. Please, please do comments, post your comments and and you may even ask questions for Captain A, uh, the schedules that, that he has soon. And okay, so our next speaker for, for this podcast will be Mike Grogan, who will be talking about Filipino war culture. And with that said, it's that leader's edge that learning is a never-ending journey with limitless vistas. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Captain Arnold. And I Salamat. hope to see you soon once you're here in Manila. All right. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Arnold. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye.